This just happened two nights ago, and I'm not over it. I was working in my bedroom, which is where my desktop is set up, and it was about 12.45am when I decided to wind down for the night. My husband had gone to bed at around 9pm, but selflessly offered to take up the guest room so I didn't have to stop working. He's awesome. Typically when this happens, my husband takes our dog with him. So imagine my surprise when I turned the lights off and saw my pup crawl out from the other side of the bed, give a big stretch and come up to me. It was 1am on the dot. I turn on the patio light and let the dog out to go to the bathroom. She is older and tends to wake us up in the middle of the night to go, and I thought I'd prevent that from happening. I watched through the blinds as my dog stared out of my sight line and began to wag her tail profusely. She crept just out of view, her eyes very focused. I got a gross sense of dread and began to panic. I threw the door open and called for her, and that's when I heard him. I don't know what he said, I was too petrified to listen really. She didn't come at first, just kind of looked at me and back at the person on the porch, who I couldn't see. I noticed then that there were pillows and a blanket stacked on top of my grill that for sure weren't mine. I screamed my dog's name as she came back in. I ran to the other side of the house and woke up my husband shouting that there was someone on our porch. He got up in disbelief and wandered to the patio entrance from the kitchen and opened the door. There, a young man, about twenty or so, sat on the ground against our house. He was barefoot and on the same wall that the bedroom entrance to the patio is on, which is why I couldn't see him unless I had stepped out. My husband asked if he was alright, but I couldn't hear his response. Husband told him he was at the wrong house and that he needed to leave. He later told me that the kid looked extremely disoriented and even had a knife in his one hand. We went to our safe and grabbed our handgun, trying to talk through the insanity and our nerves. We don't live in a crime-heavy city. We never heard anything happening in our neighborhood and nothing like this had ever happened to us before. But there we were at 1am with a stranger on our patio who had been there for God only knew how long in the dark. When we walked back out to the living room, we saw he had moved to a chair on the patio. My husband shined the light on the handgun at him and shouted for him to leave, and I began calling the police. When they arrived, the man was gone, but his pillows and blanket were still there. One of the officers told us he believed he knew who the young man was. He had a psychotic episode earlier in the week after coming off of his bipolar meds. He lived nearby and was probably headed back that way. We're no strangers to mental illness, so naturally I felt awful that we had left to calling the police and brandishing a weapon, but at the same time, what was he doing in my yard with a knife? So, to the young man who opened my gate, closed my gate behind him, and sat on my patio at 1am, I still have your pillows. They're on my back porch where you left them. Come back and grab them, but just not when I'm home. So for about three or four years from the age of about 15, I worked in a small shop in a town about 10 miles from where I live. I guess because the town, although small, is the hippie area, I live in a rural part of the UK, and because the shop is small enough to only need one person working, I experienced a few slightly strange characters. This girl Lily was one of her regulars. She was quite sweet and non-threatening, and used to come in and just lurk around for a while and talk to whoever was working. I think she may have had some slight learning or communication difficulties, though I don't want to be presumptuous. Anyway, Lily soon took a real shining to me and would come in and ask my boss for my schedule, or where I was and when I was going to be coming in, and would come in every time I was working just to talk to me. She didn't seem to notice I was beginning to be a bit blunt as she was kind of putting off customers and I was busy as the only person working. I guess because she was a girl and although probably five years older than me, much smaller, I didn't find it at all creepy. Even when she started asking very personal questions like where I lived, what bus I got and asked what time, she would sometimes come in and say that she had seen me or watched me and described what I had been doing. For example, I saw you yesterday looking at shoes in Oxfam at the uh, top of the street. 
I'm fairly conspicuous looking and it's quite a small town so again this wasn't that strange. Anyway as this went on I would often kind of ignore her and serve other customers and she would just stand and stare at me or look around the shop, usually staying at least half an hour often longer. One day We've just started opening Sundays and the shop is dead. I see her walk past outside and she spots me and comes in. We're the only two in the shop and she starts making me quite uncomfortable and then she suddenly grabs her right arm and asks if I'm controlling it. And if I can see it shaking and out of control like an animal. She is very obviously shaking it herself. And this goes on and gets more extreme and I'm getting quite uncomfortable. So I say I have to pack orders and go out to the stockroom. She follows me and waits outside the door, which again doesn't seem that strange, until she starts to speak, quietly. She speaks for a while before I catch what she's saying. She's asking herself questions to herself, in a more high-pitched, childish-sounding voice replying, and I realize after the conversation goes on that the high-pitched voice is supposed to be me and I'm replying to these things about myself to her and the conversation goes on and on between Lily and me and she knows a lot about me some of it things I'd said over the past few months some of it things she must have just noticed from really watching me or following me I finally freak out a bit and text my boss to call the shop so I can act like I have to lock up and run errands I got out quite quickly and found it skin-crawlingly strange, but I suppose for now, non-threatening. I don't work or live there anymore, but it's one of the few strange encounters I've had there. I guess because only young girls were employed and it was very quiet, it was kind of inevitable. My colleagues had equally strange, if not worse, experiences with her. just got off of work. Today I work 7am to 1pm. At around 10.45 a man walks in. I've had previous odd encounters with this man, such as seeing him walk behind me around my neighborhood and him hanging out near my street. I had brushed those off since I live right next to where I work and figured he lived there also but always kept an eye on him. Anyway, the man comes in and orders his usual pastry, I work at a bakery, and tells me, I'm going to stay inside and eat my pastry. For anyone who doesn't know, my county is currently under lockdown for obvious reasons and all dining indoors is strictly prohibited. Not to mention my bakery is tiny and there have never been any tables to sit inside, only a coffee bar that has never had space to sit. I tell him, "Uh, we're on lockdown, you can't really eat inside. His response chills me. Are you alone here? Yes? I respond stupidly, but quickly try to catch myself. But my coworker will be here soon. A complete lie. It's only about 11 a.m., and my coworker isn't scheduled till 1 p.m. when I'm off. Then no one will see me in here. He responds and goes back to eating his pastry at the coffee counter. I roll my eyes and go back to work, not getting paid enough to care if he quickly eats his pastry and leaves. Ten minutes pass. Then 15. This guy is still in my bakery. I look over, and he's finished his pastry and has moved closer to the open space in the counter meant for employees to walk back and forth between the front of the store and to the employees only side. Now I'm starting to get uncomfortable. I quickly text my coworker, a 30 year old man who owns a lot of guns and treats me like his little sister. I send 911. I look over again and now the man is even closer and is now reading a book. He's putting the book in front of his face and peeking at me from above it, watching me. Multiple customers come in and out during his stay. Every time I turn my back to him he gets closer and closer and closer until eventually he is halfway in our employee only area. I begin frantically texting my coworker. He tells me he's four minutes away and I finally make the decision to text my boyfriend. I had avoided doing so to keep from scaring him, but now I'm feeling terrified. I sat in the back of the employee area watching this guy. 
I held a knife just in case he decided to come any closer. Just as he takes a step closer, my coworker busts through the door. A small confrontation ensues and the man leaves the shop but continues to sit in his parked car right out front and stares at me. I tell my coworker about the previous experiences I've had with him and he's had enough. He marches out to the guy's car and tells him next time he comes around and bothers me, it'll be his last. Thankfully, my boyfriend also pulls up at this point and joins in with the verbal warnings. I'm hoping and praying that this will be the last time I see this guy. This series of events took place about seven years ago. I was having a smoke outside my small duplex apartment at about 4 a.m., I worked 12s and had an odd schedule, so it wasn't unusual for me to be alone in those early morning hours when almost nobody else was awake. Occasionally I'd have a chat with my neighbor. She was probably in her early 60s, had suffered a stroke in the past. She was very sweet and didn't have anyone to vent to, so I would listen, smile, and try to be good company. She's mostly unrelated, but will come up again later. I sat there alone, smoking, square in one hand, half a blunt in the other. It was practically silent that early in the morning, which is the only reason I was able to hear some footsteps coming from the nearby alleyway. The view was obscured by some tall bushes in my neighbor's yard, but I could see a small figure approaching. Gonna bum a smoke, bro, says the figure, who's finally about to turn the corner and reveal themselves. I immediately responded, Sure, no problem. As the person comes into view, I was a bit surprised to see it was a short man. Maybe I shouldn't note these next details, but I feel like I must because I feel like it adds some context to the situation. If you're sensitive to the mention of ethnicity, skip forward to the next paragraph. I'm mixed, white and black, and have waist-length dreads. This guy is a dark-skinned African-American. I live in a small town, rural Ohio, and am one of the very few non-white people in the area excluding the kids from the local colleges who come from all over the world but are rarely seen off campus or outside of the bars and whatnot in my experience. The fellow was dressed like he was from the city or somewhere a bit fancier, more stylish, urban than what I'm used to locally. He seemed oddly super relieved to see me and even more excited when he saw I had a blunt burning. I offered to share and basically let him have the rest. We instantly hit it off making random small talk. I have pretty serious social anxiety. I always think I sound stupid or lame when I talk, so I really just wanted to shake hands and part ways. I eventually asked him how he ended up in the alley at 4am and he had a pretty crazy excuse. Allegedly he had come to Ohio from somewhere south, can't remember which state he told me, I didn't care too much. According to him, they sold him the idea that rural Ohio was a wonderland of druggies, which is pretty much true and he intended to come here and hustle up a small fortune. Unfortunately for him, soon after arriving to town, he went to a local bar with the two women, began flirting with other women, and the females he was allegedly with got angry and jealous. They all stormed out of the bar, got in the car, sped off, and eventually tossed him and all of his loose belongings out of the vehicle. In the short time before going to the bar, he also allegedly spent all of his money doing these illicit substances instead of hustling so he was dead broke. He also reveals that he's had a history of being arrested and shot at. He alleged that it was all based on baby mama drama and that he was the victim. I was in no position to argue so I just listened and smiled. He told me great prison stories of defending a man then after being released being taught how to make meth as a favor for the defensed man's brother. It's all tied in with his big hustle plans, I suppose. I, on the other hand, worked 12s and had a new baby, so I wasn't really about that life. Anymore, at least. I went through a wannabe rapper phase in the early 2000s. Before I knew it, two three hours had passed and he's still talking and shows no intention on moving on. I'm overly polite, so I was stuck. My now wife came out and saw what was going on. She's understandably confused. She makes it awkward enough that he leaves. A few hours later, my downstairs neighbor is banging on my door. I hardly slept, so I didn't even want to answer. 
He tells me my friend is outside waiting for me. So he was there and wanting to chill and chat, which a year prior I would have been fine about and smoked him out and chilled, but I had a kid and a girlfriend and responsibilities, so it caused issues to say the least. Said he was out looking for money or a ride, trying to make calls, etc. The whole thing was shady and I had a weird feeling about him, but he was genuinely cool towards me and treated me like he'd known me for years. I felt pretty bad for him considering that the small town we live in can be kind of racist and suspicious, etc. And he stood out like a sore thumb, even to me, myself being amongst the weirdest looking, most noticeable person in town. Plus, I thought somehow I was discriminating. I knew how that felt and wasn't going to pass it on. Plus, I knew I was his only bastion of hope. Nobody else was going to help or let him hang around. It's a small town, there's nowhere to go. So, I ignored things like, for instance, when I asked him where his stuff was. He went back to the alley and came back with a few trash bags and a big girl's purse. He said that a man saw him get kicked out and gave the bags to him. He offered the purse to me for my wife. I politely declined but appreciated the gesture, I guess. It felt weird, but again, I was afraid I was discriminating somehow. I gave him a big luggage type bag I had gotten as a gift years before and never used. He transferred all the stuff into the bag. I only saw a few things like a sweatshirt. He wore the sweatshirt later that day and it totally clashed with his style and seemed too small. It felt like it wasn't his but thought I was just jumping to conclusions. I grabbed him some food from inside and gave him like $20 for survival and also bribed him to leave. He eventually took off in search of rides, women to stay with, and money or whatever. As night fell, it got super cold, and when I cautiously crept back out to smoke, he appeared again like he'd been hanging around the area for a while. He looked super cold and was shivering and rubbing his hands together. At this point, I really just wanted to let him crash on the couch, but again, I had a woman and a new baby in my house, and I didn't know this dude. So I got him some blankets and hot pockets and snacks and let him crash in the garage we shared with the neighbors. Needless to say, they were surprised to find him there in the morning. This time, he said he was my cousin. They didn't like it and confronted me about it. I apologized and told them the truth, excluding some important sketchy details because I knew they'd probably get him in trouble somehow and I felt bad. I knew I had to work in the morning and was not going to leave with him creeping around my house and with family home alone. He was a stranger and I wasn't going to take the risk, even though I sort of blindly hoped and trusted that we respected each other. I went online and found tickets for that day and was ready to just pay for them as a good deed and drive him to the stop. When I came out and told him, he was really thankful and thanked me so much for looking out for him. At some point it took a weird turn and he showed me a broken looking security camera and offered it to me or was trying to sell it for cash. I didn't want it and doubted it worked and knew that there was no way he was just legally obtaining that. Still, I just wanted him gone and didn't want to betray him or dime him out. He left on one final search for money. I gave him another 20 or so in hopes that it would keep him out of trouble. Finally, after another few hours, I heard radios outside of my window. I headed downstairs before I even heard knocking. It was the cops. Luckily for me, it was a very calm, professional officer, much unlike many I've dealt with in town. He told me that my wife's bike had been stolen and they have it. He starts to question me about the individual. I guess when they arrested him, he described me as a tall white guy with a mohawk. I'm guessing he was actually possibly looking out for me and not trying to involve me further or cover up what came next. I think he planned on returning the bike because his possessions were still in my garage. I told the officer the truth. I told him about how I met him, how he'd been around a few days, how I gave him some money, was going to buy him a ride because I didn't want him around when I went to work. I didn't tell him any of the stories he told me or anything about his hustle plans, etc. I felt like I was definitely going to be accused as an accomplice. I have tattoos all over, long dreads, wore hoodies and jeans every day. I thought for sure they'd assume the worst. Luckily for me, they'd already spoken to my neighbor, the woman who had the stroke, and she said I was a very nice man, that I rarely had visitors, and I'm a good dad. A stellar review, to be honest. 
The officer said I was smart not to let him inside and didn't ask much else. We got the bike back. He was on parole or something and not supposed to be out of state. All of the items in the bag were stolen from my neighbors around the corner down the alley he appeared from. Turns out the people he robbed were into drugs and stuff and ran into him earlier to make some deal and he came back and stole a bunch of clothes and allegedly panties and other toys. I'm not sure if the panties and things like that was true and I only found that info out because the person he robbed was also my co-worker. So yeah, don't share cigs and blunts with randos at 4am. My car died a while back and I've been using Lyft to get around town as needed. I am within walking distance to a good variety of stores so it hasn't been too pricey for me. However, I recently needed to go to the pharmacy and the pet supply store, both too far to walk. So I go to the pharmacy, pick up my prescription, and call my ride to the pet supply store. The driver who picked me up seemed initially very polite, asking how my day was, commenting on the weather, etc., but things got weird very fast. He abruptly asked me if I was hungry. When I said no, he began to insist that we stop at a restaurant to get food, and would not stop until I lied and said that I had just eaten a large lunch. Then he asked if I wanted to get coffee. Again, no. He backed off and turned up the radio. A minute later, he asked if I like music and if I like to dance. I answered that I don't care for dancing, to which he asked, well, why not? Then he asked if I like to drink, and if so, what bars do I like? I felt very uncomfortable at this point and said, I don't drink much. Well, why not? He asked again. Not even a little? Not even a little here and there? I lied that alcohol makes me nauseous. But then he asked if I live alone. I said no, that I live with my husband. He asked how long I've been married and if I am happy with my husband. Then he casually asked if my husband is a strong guy, if he hits the gym. I began to feel very panicked at this point. Why would this guy want to know if I live alone or how physically strong my husband is? He was being very pleasant and cheerful the whole time, but staring intently at me through the rearview mirror, which disturbed me. I lied a third time that my husband was military and that I was so happy to have him home with me. He became disinterested after I began gushing about my husband and abruptly turned up the radio. So loud it hurt my ears in the back seat. I'm not even kidding. The windows were vibrating from the noise. We arrived at the pet supply store. I jumped out of the car and hurried away. Once in the store, I took my time perusing the aisles to ensure that the driver had left. I stayed there nearly 40 minutes. It was rush hour, so I was fairly confident he had received another passenger request and left. After buying feed for my bunny, I headed out and requested another ride. I kid you not, Dude was waiting in the parking lot and whipped his car out in front of me as soon as I walked out the doors. He accepted my ride request after blocking me from walking into the parking lot, jumped out of his car, and took my bag of feed out of my hands and bundled it into the car. It all happened very quickly and looking back I should have cancelled my ride right then and there. I regret not putting my foot down and calling him out on his creepiness. I freeze up and start panicking. I tell myself that I'm being dramatic, that it's all just a coincidence. I get in his car and realize with misery that my home address is logged into his GPS. He is very jolly now and asks if I'll be happy to get home. I had a stroke of genius and lied, number four, that I was visiting my friend for dinner. But oh yes, I can't wait to get home later on, it's been such a long day. He didn't seem to like hearing this and gave me the loud radio treatment again. I arrived home and grabbed my bag of bunny feed so he wouldn't try to help me carry it inside. The driver got out when I did and tried to push a paper into my hand. It had his phone number on it and he said, You'll call me tonight when you're ready to go home. Yes, your boy demanded that I call his personal phone to get a ride home after dinner with my friend. I refused and he tried to force the paper into my hand grabbing my fingers and crumpling them into a fist around said paper. I lied a fifth time that my friend was driving me home later and dropped the paper on the sidewalk. He finally gave up and 
got back into his car. I walked up to the door but then realized that the driver was still parked at the curb, watching me. He saw me looking and quickly pretended to mess with his phone, but I suspect he was waiting to see if my friend would come to the door or if I was lying. I casually knocked on the door, waited a moment, then pulled out my phone as though to call my friend. While making the call, I decided to turn and stare pointedly at him. It worked, and he eventually eased his car out and away. Once he was around the corner, I rushed into the house and locked the door behind me. Thank God, that was the last I saw of him. This happened in January 2017. I was going to visit my boyfriend at his flat, so I caught the train across town. Important to note, I was traveling with my pet dog, a five-year-old border collie. I was traveling at peak time at around 5.30pm, so it was fairly busy. When getting off the train, there was the usual rush and push for people to climb the stairs across the platform and leave the train station. I don't know what made me notice him, but there was this guy directly behind me when I first got off the train. Mid-thirties, smart casual dress, just an ordinary looking guy, but something made me notice him. As it was so busy, it took a few minutes to climb the stairs, cross the bridge across the train platform, and down the other stairs. During this time, I noticed this guy two more times, once walking very near me, the next directly in front of me, and then he disappeared. As I got through the ticket barrier and left the train station, I then started to cross the car park, which had already cleared quite a bit. Suddenly the sky is in front of me again, but he's stopping me in my tracks trying to talk to me. He's smiling at me and he says, I notice your dog was limping. Wanna hop in the car and I'll give you a lift? I've got a dog and I know how it feels when they're not well. At this point, I just remember looking down at my dog in confusion because she wasn't limping and wasn't sick. I started to get this horrible gut feeling and I just said to him, She's fine, thanks. I'll just walk home. It's not far. I then started to walk away from him and he deliberately sidestepped to block my way before saying, No, honestly, it's fine. Just get in the car. I again told him no and tried to walk away. I could feel my dog start to tense up and I tried to act really calm and nonchalant, but I was so scared by this guy. I'm so glad I had my dog with me though, at least I had some sort of protection. Again, he blocks my path and says, What's your problem? Just get in the car. I'm trying to help you out. At this point, I don't even reply to him. I push past him and sped walked away. The path I take runs parallel to the car park and he's standing there watching me before getting in his car. I'm totally paranoid about walking now in case he's following me in his car, so... I deliberately linger on a main road where there's nowhere for traffic to stop. I eventually see his car stroll by, slower than other cars passing by, and I swear I can make out another person's head in the back seat, peeking out the window as they pass. I immediately sprinted to my boyfriend's house. I went on a family holiday with my dad, mum, and brother to Tasmania, which is kind of like a big island to the south of Australia. I wasn't terribly interested in the trip, just wanted to spend time with my family, so I left all the bookings to my dad, and I never will again. He has his own Airbnb he manages, so I thought he would be able to find decent places on his own. When we walked up to the Airbnb my dad booked, the first thought I had was, if I wanted to sell drugs... I would do it here. My mom wasn't impressed at all and was already telling my dad off for booking it. I didn't say anything. Maybe the inside is nicer. It was a dingy little house. The paint was peeling, the roof was rusty, and there were plants overgrown to the side of the building. Imagine it's grown into the actual foundation and wooden planks. There were three entrances. The first one I worked out was the entrance for the host. It looked okay, not as bad as our entrance, a little tidier. It went downstairs so we figured out after a while the host most likely lived below us. The second looked like it was the main entrance to the house but it was sealed shut. 
The door looked like it would break down if anyone was to even push on it slightly and was obviously unused. The third was ours. Aside from the overgrown plants, it was fairly normal. From the looks of it, we figured out later that it looks like the host has divided the house up somehow. She lives below, we live upstairs, but there was one half of the house upstairs that wasn't accounted for. Hard to explain, but the space we occupied only accounted for half the house, and it only went up the main entrance I spoke of, which is in the middle of the house. We checked in, just grabbed the keys, as the host had never contacted us at this point. All was well on the inside. It looked a little old, but wasn't creepy from the get-go. I did notice some odd things. I only mentioned this to my dad. There were a bunch of antique instruments displayed at the entrance, and right on top of one of the pianos were three things that looked like urns. Now to explain, I am of Chinese descent. These urns freaked me out. Some people think they're for displaying, but we use it to store dead people's ashes so I really, really didn't like them being there. I told my dad, and he didn't like it either, but he went and tapped the urn. Okay, dad. To see if there was something in it. He couldn't tell, though. But he mentioned the one he tapped was definitely one we use for ashes. It had scripts on it for, like, safe passage to the heavens from what I could make out. After I stopped freaking out, I went and picked first dibs on the biggest room, as per my usual, but then noticed that there were heaps of mirrors around the room. Again, another thing, not sure if it's a Chinese thing, but we don't like sleeping with mirrors facing us when we're in bed if we can help it. So, I went to move one of them, which was smack bang in the front of the bed. It was leaning against the door, and when I took the mirror away, the door actually opened ajar a little. That freaked me out. I got my dad, and we decided it's better I slept with my mom in another room, and he would take this room with my brother. Again, my dad, being dad, he opened the door a little and shouted, Hello? Before I told him to shut up. I had a peek inside but couldn't make out much, only that it was dusty and seemed to be a part of the other half of the house. My dad soon after put a chair and his suitcase on top of it in front of the door to keep it shut. Fast forward to that night, everyone was sleepy and went ahead to bed. I stayed up a little because I had some emails from work to catch up on and went to work in the living room area. At one point in the night, at around 11.30pm, I remember there was a few thumps on the roof, sounded like someone's footsteps, then followed by the loudest and most horrendous noise. It sounded like a train was on top of me. It was screeching like steel on steel. It lasted maybe for 30 seconds. I literally froze at that point, didn't know what to do. Thought my dad would come check on me, but no one ever did. I didn't say anything the next morning because I thought I may have imagined it out of tiredness. The following night, same thing again, except I was in bed this time. Just got into it, so not asleep yet. It was around the same time that the exact same noise started again. My mom woke up, but was frozen like me. Dad came to check on us, and we were all just frozen there listening to this noise, wondering what it was. After it stopped, we were freaked out but managed to shrug it off and went back to sleep. Before I fell asleep, I remember hearing some faint thumps that stopped shortly after it started. The next morning, we kind of had a meeting of some sort to discuss this. This is when I told them about the night before. We were extremely unsettled at this point and luckily it was our checkout day. We just got out of there and we never found out what it was. The creepiest thing was, after we packed up and was well away from the place, Dad was driving but he still looked really disturbed so I asked him if he was okay. He said, I am now but I didn't have a good sleep last night. I pressed on and asked him what was that noise. He said, no, that didn't bother him much compared to another thing he experienced. What bothered him most was when we left from our tour on the second day, he still had his suitcase on the top of the chair blocking the door in his room. He just showered, so he also left the towel in the chair to hang. He said when he came back, he noticed the door was slightly ajar. The chair had moved slightly and the towel was sitting on the floor, as if someone had tried to push it from the other side, but unsuccessfully after they noticed that there was a lot of stuff on the other end. I forced him to ask the host about the noise in the door. She replied that the door was the door to her art room, and the noise was just a possum on the roof. 
I don't believe her. The noise was not something an animal or even a human could make. Like any 21-year-old, I went on Tinder trying to find my dream guy. Little did I know this would be my big mistake. I came across this guy, Scott. I thought he looked like a nice guy, so of course I swiped right. It's a match. I'm not one of those girls that will start the conversation. Too many times I didn't get a reply, so I stopped trying. Two days go by, and I had completely forgot all about my match on Tinder with Scott. Until I looked at my phone and saw a notification. Scott sent you a message. I'm not going to lie, I got a little excited and opened it straight away. It was a normal message, and after that we started messaging more and more. He seemed like a really nice guy. A little weird, but hey, people could say that about me. Fast forward a few weeks, and after him asking me numerous times to meet up with him for a drink, I finally felt comfortable enough to agree. That night rolls around and I head to the bar to meet him. I get there before the meeting time of 7 to make sure I can get a drink in before he arrives to settle my nerves. I was sat at the bar talking to some random girls that were there as I waited. It got to 7.20 and he still hadn't arrived yet, so I sent him a message. He proceeded to tell me that he was sorry and that he just had to stop by a friend's house and it took him longer than expected and that he would be there soon. No big deal, I thought to myself. I'll just have another drink. Finally, it got 7.45. I get a tap on the shoulder. I turn around to see a man that I don't recognize. He tries to hug me, and I look at him puzzled, like, who are you? He then told me that he was Scott. He clearly wasn't the guy in the pictures that I thought I'd been talking to. He told me that he was really sorry for not telling me that it was, in fact, photos of his friend that he had used on his Tinder because he thought no one as pretty as me would give him the time of day if he posted pictures of himself. At this point, I had a few drinks, so I decided to humor the guy and get to know him. I know, huge mistake, and I'm an idiot. Turns out his friend actually told him to use the photos because he thought it would give Scott a chance to meet girls, and hopefully they would like him for him and not the photos. The night goes on, and we're chatting about small things. Definitely no connection with him, so I decided to call it a night at about 10. I noticed that he hadn't been drinking at all during the night. A little strange considering he chose this spot. I tell him that I'm going to go home in a taxi, and he offers to drive me home. I said no. In my mind, I didn't want him to get the wrong impression and have to deal with the whole awkward encounter in case he wanted to come into my place. I said goodbye, and I walked outside hoping that there would be an available taxi, but no such luck. I stood there for another 10 minutes, still waiting, when Scott suddenly drives around the corner, and he insists on giving me a lift home. At this point, I was over standing outside in the cold, so I did accept his ride. I got him to drop me off at the end of my street so he didn't know which house was actually mine. After getting out of the car, I started walking, and I heard him drive off. I called my friend and told her how much of a weird night it had ended up. As I was walking to my front door, I turned around and I saw a car in the distance that looked similar to his, sitting in a dark alley with its headlights off. I didn't think anything of it and I went inside. I went to sleep and I woke up in the morning to a bunch of messages of Scott saying how much of a good time he had with me and that he was so glad I could get past the fact that he wasn't the guy in the pictures and that he wanted to see me again. Now I never tried to lead anyone on, so I replied saying that it was nice to meet him, but I don't think that it will go anywhere, and we were better off moving on. He clearly didn't get that message, because throughout the day he messaged me constantly, asking if it was something he did. Like, yeah dude, you posted as your friend to get a date with me, that's what you did. I just ignored his message and hoped that he would get the hint. Later that night, I was laying in bed watching TV when I heard a knock at the door. I went downstairs and looked through the peephole, and no one was there. So I went to the window in the living room to see if I could get a better view. I noticed that there was a box at the door. I thought to myself that it was a bit creepy, 
but I hesitantly opened the door and I got the box. I went up to my room with it and I looked inside. It was photos of me from the night before at the bar, but taken from a perspective where I clearly didn't know somebody was taking the photos. Obviously I'm freaked out at this point and know that it had to be Scott. He must have followed me home after dropping me off. I heard his car drive off, so he must have came back. I threw the box away and made sure all the doors and the windows were locked. I also made sure to block Scott's number. A few weeks had gone by and nothing eventful had happened, up until yesterday. I was out taking my dog for a walk and noticed that there was a person with a hoodie on following me from quite a distance. I know he was following me because I took all the back alleys in a random way, not so I was actually going to a particular destination. It makes me wonder if he has been watching me for the last few weeks, or if I'm just being paranoid and imagining it. Either way, I'll be getting in the car and taking my dog to the dog park for the next couple of days.